If I could describe to get my life tour in one word, it would be vulnerability. Showing up for yourself is so important. Welcome to the Get My Life Tour. I'm your host, Lydia T. Blanca. Hey y'all and welcome to the Get My Life Tour. It is me, your host, Lydia T. Blanco. And as always, I'm so hyped because you decided to show up for yourself and take center stage in your life. If this is your first time, welcome to the Get My Life Tour. Look, admission is free. All I ask is that you are committed to yourself and as you show up, that you are present. If this is your second, 50th, or 70th time tuning in. Welcome back. I'm so glad that you are here yet again. I do not take that lightly. And shout out to everyone who is listening internationally. I was looking at my dashboard and I noticed that people are tuning in from Tel Aviv, from Ghana, from, oh my goodness, Nigeria. Nigeria, I miss you. In just so many different areas of the world, Singapore, Italy, you know, of course, here in the Bay Area, New York, throughout the States, D.C., Greensboro, North Carolina, shout out to the home team, Bennett College. But I'm so grateful and it warms my heart to know that people are truly tuning in and listening with their heart and that people are able to come here, take center stage and leave with whatever it is that you are receiving. So thank you. Look, even though this is the Get My Life Tour, I am someone who does not celebrate fandom. And I don't even know if fandom is a real word, but you know, the idea of having fans, right? You would think on tour, there are groupies, there are, you know, uh, jockeys, whatever they call, I think jockeys is sports related. Don't quote me. Okay. But there are, you know, there are people who are stands like super fans and fans. And I want to be very clear. I do not operate that way as it relates to the Get My Life Tour. I also don't operate that way in life. And the reason why I'm sharing this with you all is because I think I'm at a point where I have a F a fan mentality. Now, there are people whose work I admire And then there are people who I'm not like fans of, right? For lack of better word, that's just a saying. But the reason why I'm literally putting so much emphasis on this is because in life and lately, I have been noticing that there are so many people who treat others like they are their fans. And I'm really not here for it. I really am not here for it. I think it is so mm, ingenuine. I think that it is disregarding and it's really off-putting to me. Like I am not attracted to people who treat others like fans. And it's really in my face right now because we're inside, right? Our interactions with others are limited, but everyone is running to share what they know. So many people are packaging their information, you know, launching podcasts, um, securing different video series, partnering with different corporations and organizations or collaborating with, you know, other people. Um, and most time people are doing that on their level, right? It's, it's a blessing to be able to operate at your highest, um, being as your highest self, you know, on a high frequency. But what I'm finding is a lot of times people who are doing that are very low vibrational and they, um, exemplify that when they treat other people as if they are their fans, now stick with me, stick with me. You know, some people position themselves as fans, as fans. And while hmm, 
I don't think there's, I feel like there's two sides of that. Cause I don't want to say, I don't think there's anything wrong with that because, you know, in the next breath, I want to say that can be problematic. And I think it becomes problematic when people struggle with their self-worth and they position themselves to idolize others, right? There's not an, a healthy dynamic between um, how someone exists and who they admire and how they show up for people and how they support them. So let me just in that sentence was saying that. But back to my initial thought um, and opinion about not being here for fans. Like I really have this in my head, like F a fan and not as it relates to someone being a fan of something or someone, but people's air. Right. Um, and I'm using fan because I think it is a word that a lot of people can relate to. Right. We're on tour. Clearly, um, if you take center stage and close your eyes with me right now, you probably would call the people in audience fans. But that's not what this tour is about. Right. But I think sometimes as people sit center stage or someone passes in the mic, they automatically think that everyone who is not on the risen platform is beneath them. And I strongly dislike that. I clearly have a problem with that. You probably can tell in my tone that I have a problem with that. And it, it rubs me the wrong way because it is, it is so unbecoming. Now I understand there are levels in life and there are people whose levels I'm not on. And there are people who, uh, who are not on my level right? It's, it's plain and simple. You feel me? That's just a fact, but how we treat people matters. Okay. That is the moral of this stop on the tour, how you treat people matters. And it is very telling of who you are. Um, you know, I just want to touch back on the point I made about those who are packaging information, collaborating, you know, doing deals with different individuals and corporations. You know, this is not a message to anyone in particular or any group in particular. But what I do want to say is that just because you choose to monetize your gifts or your talents does not make anyone else a fan. Some people become customers, right? If they choose to opt in for your product or service, but that does not mean that you have the right to treat other people who admi- who may admire your work or want to learn from you a fan. And it is to your detriment when you treat people that way. Look, so many people think that I've arrived and, you know, I must be this or that because of the spaces that I've been in or the people who I've been able to connect with or the people who I'm connected to. Um, and then, you know, there are those who are often surprised when they realize, oh, wow, Lydia is grounded. Lydia is kind. And, you know, it may feel like you know me for a long time or honestly, my guard is up because I have to protect, you know, my peace depending on someone's energy. But I'm always kind. Right. Um, This is where I'm going with it. You don't have to be friendly, but being kind is essential. And there is a huge difference between being friendly and kind, because I get it. Some people are too familiar all the time and it is offensive. And depending on your personality type, it it can be just like, ugh, you know what I'm saying? Like, excuse me. I've seen people get checked. I've had to correct, you know, um, how some people have approached me at times. And I've also been corrected. Okay. Let, let me set the record straight because I am not untouched. And I really think that it was when I was corrected, not even by someone's word, but I think it was someone's mannerisms, how they responded to my, my, innocent enthusiasm 
um, that came off as very familiar, it wasn't until that moment where I realized that was not okay. And then I think with a more experience personally and professionally in life, I've learned that it is not okay to be too familiar. So you have to draw the line um, and be able to distinguish what is, you know, being friendly and then what is being kind. But a lot of people are not friendly or kind, okay? Some of y'all are just like, ugh. And I'm like, um, mm, mm, okay, maybe they'll get it later or maybe they won't. But, um, you know, I'm saying this because I'm not sure what side of the spectrum you may fall on, but I think that this is important to say, you know, it is so interesting when we encounter people who treat other people like fans. I'm not sure if you've had this experience at all um, or if you have yet um, <laughs> to correct your behavior. I don't know. Um, but some of the ways that I have handled other people treating me like a fan is to turn them off. OK. And yes, you heard me correctly. I have had encounters with others where, you know, I may have been the interviewer or the initial point of contact or whatever the case may have been, right? Just in the same room as them and began to engage in conversation with them on a very, you know, uh, hmm, I I don't want to say, I guess a, in a professional manner. Um, and I have been treated like I was a fan, like a groupie, okay? And I have learned how to turn people off. You know, um, a lot of that has looked like me politely exiting conversations or respect respectfully bowing out and walking away, right? Now, do not p- picture me bowing, you feel me, at any kind of angle, 90, 60, none of that. Sometimes it's just a head nod and you walk away. Um, I know, you know, many people are not gathering right now, but you can practice this with close friends and family members. I'm kidding. Um, but you may have to practice it with somebody who, um, you know, mistreats you. Sometimes you just really have to take a step back. And that's what I mean when I say turn them off. Right. Um, if they blow on too much wind, literally like a fan, because they're treating you like one, then turn them off. Okay, that was a bar. I ain't even like, like it wasn't. <laughs> you got it. Okay, cool. But in all seriousness, you have to remind people of who you are. Okay, that's my second point. So the first point, turn people off. The second point, and I hope I didn't say that incorrectly. The second point, remind people of who you are. There's nothing wrong with advocating for yourself. I have had a number of experiences where my throat chakra has literally been tight. And I'm like, what is that feeling? I don't know if I got kicked in my throat, like if it's an elephant on my chest or what. But I really feel like I have been strangled because I have not spoken up for myself or people have mistreated me because they don't know who I am, right? Or whose I am. And it's not until they have an aha moment or someone, you know, sends them a little birdie and then they correct their posture and come to me correctly. But you have to remember who you are and you have to remind people of who you are. Now, I'm not telling you to go around you know what I'm saying? Tooting your own, own horn in silent spaces where no one is, you know what I'm saying, mistreating you or doing all that talking, but no one to advocate for yourself. I think that is essential. You know, there are so many things in life that will humble us. And it's really humbling. <laughs> when you engage with someone like you know them and they are completely dismissive. I feel like that's one of the most like gut-wrenching things. And the other gut-wrenching thing is when people blatantly try to put you down or minimize who you are, right? Because that impacts how we show up over time. 
Um, so we have to really practice being kind. Okay. So let me get to my third point. The first point, turn them off. Second point, remind people of who you are. And you know what? My third point is simple. It's all about what the Get My Life Tour is about. And that is show up. Okay. Show up as yourself. You know, I know this message is painted everywhere. There are a million quotes and notebooks and journals and affirmations dedicated to um, this idea of showing up. But, you know, when we shrink ourselves or we feel like it's not important to come as we are um, and give people all of us, then that's when people don't know who they're dealing with, right? They may think that they are um, the biggest and the baddest. And the reason why they don't know any better is because you haven't shown up the way that you're supposed to show up, right? I, I think that there's something so powerful that happens when we really make up in our minds that we are going to either have this presence that commands attention when we walk into the room or we're going to find ways to make noise. You know what I'm saying? You ever heard a really expensive accessory like clink? And you're like, wow, that's some really good hardware. Like, who is that? Right. You kind of look around the room. Maybe the ladies understand what I'm talking about. Fellas, my bad. But you know what I'm talking about. Right. You hear some really good loafers walk into the room. I don't even know if that's a thing, but I've heard men come in and I'm like, oh, wow, look at his shoes. Let me know if I'm wrong. But we have to be mindful about showing up and making a statement. We're not playing small this year. We're not playing small this time around. You already know that. Look, I told you on the first stop of the tour this season, use all of the space on the stage, right? And I feel like that could just be like my fourth and final point. And I know that I've already done an entire episode on that, but I think it's so applicable. When people are trying to treat you like a fan, Look, show them how you use all the space on the stage, okay? When you show up. I, oh my goodness. I can't tell you how many times um, I've had like these really awkward encounters with people online, offline, whatever the case may be. Um, but each of them have taught me something. And then as I, I watch women who I admire and the way they show up, that also teaches me things. Men as well. I'm just like, oh my goodness. Okay. Let me take note on that because, mm, right. It's, it's really, um, it's really empowering when you're able to take note from someone and be able to apply it and it works for you, right? So I'm sharing some of the things that I've been able to take note of, um, firsthand experiences, as well as those secondhand experiences that I've been able to apply and that have worked really well for me. You know, um, I really have this F a fan mentality and it's because, you know, I also believe that we're already winning, right? No matter where you are in life, we are all ready winning. So to treat someone like they're not is whack. Like, I feel like that's so weak. Okay. Extra K for emphasis. Weak. All right. I'm going to stop being so loud in your ear, but I do believe that wholeheartedly. You know, I really hope that, you know, the tips that I shared are helpful. And, you know, I'm trying to think about my mic drop moment real quick. You know what's coming to me. Okay. I'm thinking about my mic drop moment. And what's coming to me is, is that people who treat others like fans don't know what it's truly like to have someone show up for them. So do not be easily offended. Look, I'm going to take that for me. And I hope that you can apply that as well. As much as it rubs me the wrong way to see 
others be mistreated or to be mistreated, don't take it personally. Look, I'm I'm really grateful for each and every time that you tune in, that you download, that you subscribe, that you connect with me online and you know what I'm saying, support all things the Get My Life Tour. So as always, be sure to visit the Get My Life Tour to listen back to the previous stops on the tour. Share with a friend. You feel me? And if you have feedback, email me at joinme at thegetmylifetour.com and you know where to find us on social media at the Get My Life Tour on every platform with the exception of Twitter because it was too long. So it's at Get My Life Tour. And if you'd like to stay connected with me um, and follow my journey as I share, you know, with Lovely Wednesdays and uh, articles that I've published um, to various platforms and just my journey, you know what I'm saying, as a dope black woman um, and journalist, be sure to do so at to Lydia T. Blanco or visit uh, my online site, LydiaTBlanco.com. Look, this season, this season, this season. That's all I'm going to say, okay? Make sure that you stay connected. I really want to hear from you, okay? DM me, email me, send a smoke signal because as we continue to grow this community, it is important for um, me to hear from you, right? I just can't be speaking um, into this microphone and not receive your feedback because feedback culture is appreciated. Okay. Look, I am so grateful for your time, for your attention and for your support. I cannot wait to continue to be on tour with you until the next time it has been real peace. Mm -hmm.